Welcome back, everyone, to Ready, Set, So. I'm your host, Brian Vogt. And I'm so excited that we have a insurance specialist named Dan Myers, and he's from the insurance store. And I'm really happy to have him on here today because not only does he have over, well, actually over five years of experience in insurance, but he also has a background in lending and financial services, too. So he's a well-rounded insurance agent. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have Dan on here was he really wanted to talk about coverages and people thinking that they got what they don't have when it comes to insuring their biggest asset for most, and that is their house. Dan, are you there? I'm here. Thanks for having me, Brian. Welcome to the show. So, so, so Dan, I guess, you know, give us some insight. What, what are we talking about when we talk about coverages? Yeah, that's a great question, and coverages can be something, um, you know, to somebody that's not deep into the insurance world like I am, that can be a challenging thing, um, and insurance is one of those things that uh, when you look at your policy information or a declarations page, and it sh- that's the page that shows you all the numbers, right? That shows you all your coverage limits, that says this is what you're covered for. Um, sometimes that's not the most important page. The pages with the words are oftentimes the more important pages, but that's what none of us look at. Um, So when I talk about coverages, uh, I think it's important to have some perspective on this. So one of my driving passions about insurance, which sounds weird to say because insurance is usually thought of to be somewhat boring, and it probably is, uh, but one of my Mm -hmm. big drivers in my business and for my clients is that uh, the Department of Insurance a couple of years ago uh, did a study on Uh, basically on this, on coverage, and specifically with homeowners, what they found was uh, 67%, 6-7, almost 70% of homeowners are considered to be underinsured. And initially I read that and I thought, wow, that's kind of scary. Uh, But what do they mean by underinsured, right? So I looked at underinsured and what their definition was is it essentially said, if the house burns down, if it blows away in a tornado, if we have to completely rebuild a home, the check that the insurance company is going to write to that homeowner isn't going to be enough to cover that cost. So to me, that was kind of a scary thing as an insurance agent, and I'm going, oh, no. Now, I dug into that a little bit deeper and figured out what some of those problems were and was very happy to know that the recommendations that I had been giving to my clients had been much more accurate uh, for a number of different reasons, there's been a lot of changes in insurance that uh, uh, have have changed the way that insurance companies evaluate uh, rebuild values. So, again, this is a lot of in the weeds stuff, a lot of uh, stuff that maybe touches on, you know, touches home for somebody, maybe doesn't. So, how can I help the average person look at a policy and say, "Hey, this should be enough coverage to rebuild my house," right? Because that's the important one. And I think the best thing that I can do is say. Uh, there, there's two or three different primary values that we assign to a home in the real estate world, right? There's a there, there's your market value, what somebody's willing to pay for the house. There's the appraised value, which is more or less the official uh, uh, opinion of value. Obviously, that's what the lenders are going off of. And then there's the rebuild value. Now, rebuild value is not connected to market values or any of this other stuff. It is, it is purely dollars and cents. What does it cost? Labor charges, debris removal, all of these soft costs factored in um, to rebuild a house. And what I can tell you is, is in the St. Louis metro area uh, and surrounding areas, that number is the rebuild value is usually more than what you're going to pay for the house. And sometimes it's 50 or 100 or more. Usually the more expensive the home, the bigger difference that's going to be from the purchase price to the rebuild value. So if those two numbers look very similar, that's cause for concern. Um, That would be the biggest thing that I can point out to you. Uh, Also, I think deductibles, it's important to touch on that because there's been a lot of changes with deductibles. And with a deductible, a lot of companies have switched to a percentage-based deductible and sometimes sounds really good. But if you've got a $300,000 house and a 1% deductible, your deductible is effectively $3,000. Now, if you're comfortable with that, that's fantastic. But also, depending on the house, that also means if the most common thing happens to it, a roofing claim, you might be paying to replace the majority of that roof yourself. 
So these are things to consider and to look at uh, and things that would be important to, uh, to most homeowners and I think uh, gives you a couple of tips and strategies to be able to assess your own policy yourself. Awesome. Awesome. Dan, Dan we're running out of time on this segment. Great information. I've been talking with Dan Myers of the insurance store. Dan, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. And now I'm going to turn my attention to, again, one of the things that we've had some great success with, and that is the book. Ready, set, sold, 12 proven steps to get your house sold for top dollar and fast in the Metro East St. Louis area. The reason why I say that is it's absolutely free. Maybe you're not looking in January to put your house on the market. Maybe March, maybe spring, maybe the summertime. Whatever it is, highly encourage you to get the book. Go to readysetsold.org, not.com, but readysetsold.org, not.com, and pick up a free copy. And I do mean free, no strings attached. Love you have this information. I'm passionate about real estate, and I want to help people. And this book has proven to be very successful for people who get it and use it. So with that said, we are also on podcasts, meaning is, is if you go to Google Play or iTunes, you missed a segment, which happens sometimes, or maybe you want to review a segment. So now we have the ability, if you go to either one of those places, we are already set sold. You just look us up. You, it's already identified what the podcast is. It has a date. It has a, what it's talked about. So it's a great way to get information. We always love it. If you like us on Facebook, go to Ready, Set, Sold with Brian Boat. And also we're on uh, other things, too. We have YouTube. So there's just different ways that we can get the information out because that's really what we're trying to do here is give you information that you can use when it comes to selling your biggest asset, and that is your house. With that said, I'll be back with the tip of the week. You're listening to Brian Voter, Ready, Set, Sold. <laughs> 